Hi, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage, and we're heading into week five of our daily history videos. Um, welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you're just now joining us. Today, I think we're going to head over to Canton and try to figure out uh, how Canton got its name. And we're going to start by going right into the middle of O'Donnell Square and right to a statue of a gentleman named John O'Connell. John O'Donnell, I'm sorry. Um, Captain O'Donnell was born in Limerick, Ireland in about 1750, I believe. Um, and in 1785, um, he, he arrived in Baltimore carrying goods from China. And he was the first American ship to trade with China, one of the first. I think there was another one called the Empress of China that was uh, going to New York about this same time. But his ship, the Palace, um, was one of the first American ships uh, to trade with China and to bring back uh, tea. And if you're, uh, if you're looking at me and saying, that can't be right, uh, the colonists, the American colonists, when we were colonies, we drank lots of tea. Remember the Boston Tea Party? Well, that's true, but there are two things to point out. One is, I said, first American sea captain to bring back uh, tea from China. Um, uh, before, uh, before we got our independence, um, the British had given a monopoly to trade with China to the British East India Company. So there were no American sea captains trading with China um, by decree from London. The second thing is, um, this was 1785. And if you remember a little bit of your American history, um, 1781 was the Battle of Yorktown when we defeated the British finally. And the Treaty of Paris officially ending the war didn't happen until 1783. So we had just been a country for only two years when Captain O'Donnell and the palace come sailing in. O'Donnell had, uh, had brought over to China uh, a bunch of animal skins, I think some barrels of pepper, um, some cotton, and he brought back uh, tea, something called Nankeen, which I think was like a yellow cloth. Um, and uh, as his ship was getting nearer, uh, people were getting kind of excited. This was the first ship uh, to trade in China uh, in Baltimore. And one of the people who got excited was George Washington. Um, Washington was at his home in Mount Vernon, not Mount Vernon, Baltimore, but Mount Vernon, Virginia, um, kind of hanging out. He wasn't going to become president until 1789, so four years after uh, this came in. And Washington uh, sent a letter over to his friend, Tench Tillman, on the eastern shore. If you know Tillman Island, that's uh, the Tillman family. Tillman had been an aide-de-camp to Washington during the Revolution. And Washington writes to Tillman and says, uh, Tench, when the, this palace boat comes into Baltimore, get over there and buy some stuff for me. Um, but kind of uh, funny, uh, in a funny way, Washington says, but only if it's a bargain. And so uh, he clearly was, out, uh, was a, a bargain hunter in those days. Tillman does come over. Um, he does buy some stuff from, uh, from Washington, including Haisan tea. Um, and, uh, and that kind of begins a friendship between O'Donnell and Washington. They correspond over the years. Um, uh, Washington, uh, although he got some stuff, he may not have gotten the bargain that he thought he was going to get because uh, uh, O'Donnell, from the sales of that first ship, uh, became quite wealthy. But the two continued a correspondence, um, and in 1790, so a year into Washington's presidency, O'Donnell uh, finally gets to meet him and gives him a present of a hookah pipe. Um, and before you get all excited and say, oh my gosh, was George Washington you know, smoking opium? Um, uh, although the clipper ships were an active part, Baltimore's clipper ships were an active part of the opium trade that was going on then, I don't think that Washington smoked opium. And well, did he smoke cannabis from his pipe? We don't have any evidence of that either. He might have just put the pipe on his mantle as kind of a decorative object, or if he used it, I suspect he probably smoked the tobacco that he was growing in his plantation in Virginia. Um, uh, but uh, O'Donnell and Washington's correspondence in that uh, trade in China was so, uh, was so big that when Washington, uh, so made such a big impression on Washington that when he became president, China became our number two trading partner. Uh, we traded more with China than we did with France or Denmark or Germany or Italy, um, second only to Great Britain. All right, back to O'Donnell. So O'Donnell lands in 1785. Um, he marries a woman um, uh, with the last name Elliot. Uh, I think Sarah Elliot was her name. If you know Elliot Street in Canton, that's named after her family. Um, and he sells his goods and he buys 11 acres of property. Um, he gets rich pretty quickly and he amasses uh, another almost 2,000 acres um, to where he owns an enormous swath of uh, Baltimore's waterfront. 
So the name Canton is, uh, is historically associated with O'Donnell naming uh, his new estate after the uh, place in China that he traded, Canton, um, now called Guangzhou. And that sounds like a perfect fit, right? Sea captain, one of the first traders with China, comes and names his estate after it. Uh, but there may be a fly in the ointment. Uh, there is a rumor out there that there's a map that was made before 1785, so before O'Donnell's day, um, that, uh, that names the place Canton, uh, the, the uh, acreage that he would eventually buy. Um, I asked a friend of mine, Daryl Jerkowitz, uh, who is a Canton native and knows about as much as, uh, about Canton as anybody I know, um, and he said that he had, he had thought he'd heard of this map, he'd never seen it either, uh, but then also pointed out that Canton uh, can be with a capital C or a lowercase c. Um, can be a place name, Canton, Guangzhou, um, but it also with a lowercase c just means a parcel of land, a, a piece of land that's been parceled out. So even if we can find a map and it's got Canton on it, uh, we gotta figure out if it's a capital C or a lowercase c. Um, and maybe we'll do, is this called crowdsourcing? I'm not exactly sure what this is called, but uh, we'll use our, our uh, airwaves here to see uh, if anybody has that map or knows where that map is or has any other evidence of Canton being called Canton before O'Donnell. Um, and if we find out, we'll post it on our website and we'll all uh, get to learn a little bit more. Uh, thanks for hanging in there and we'll see you tomorrow.